I was hoping that today would be the day that we would have the David Force takeover. I was hoping today this would be the this would be Ace Cast Live. This would be the David Force talk show. David, how are you? If you had stayed on site here at the Coliseum, Chris, I would have filled in and taken over. I Brody Brazil might be the most injured broadcaster. I mean, you'd be cutting him how many times he's been on the IL this year. I got the call. I wanted to be there today. I want you to open the show, but uh, maybe we'll get that uh, for the next homestand, the final homestand. Hard to believe, right? It's September 1st. It is. Yeah. I was, well, at first, I shouldn't laugh at Brody. I've spent more time in the training room as an exec than uh, than most people do as a player. So uh, I hope Brody gets well. But uh, yeah, it's finally September. A couple extra players here today, a couple of extra roster spots and some some playoff races in the minor leagues to keep tabs on. So yeah, we got one, one month left. I like how you mentioned that. I wasn't going to go there, uh, but I like how you mentioned the minor leagues because do you think there is something about your minor league guys learning how to win and tasting it, feeling it, understanding it together that helps play up here with the big club? There's no doubt about it. That w winning is a big part of development. Keith, Keith Lipman always said that from the day I got here. Keith talked about that in the minor leagues. Um, there's, there's a lot of evidence of groups that came up through our system together winning, you know, none, none better than the, the Pinder Olsen Chapman group that won at almost every level coming up. Um, and it is, it's an important thing. And, and you put guys in situations down there, uh, late in games or, or whatever, you know, in pressure situations now and, you know, in AAA, they're playing in front of big crowds in most cities and uh, it's a big part of development. So I love the fact that Vegas is one game out behind Round Rock in the the second half here, they they walked it off in the tenth inning last night to to pick up a game, and and those guys are getting to experience a playoff race. You know, sometimes you just wonder, like September calls, we were used to just the whole band coming up, and now it just doesn't work that way. You get two guys, Soderstrom and Long. Was this a was this a, a tough conversation, or was it an easy one for these moves? Well, I, I think it's going to be fluid over the course of the month. I, you know, I think we'll we'll try and get a look at a, a number of guys, frankly. So, uh, no, it was important to us to get Tyler back here. Um, you know, make sure he starts getting at bats at the big league level again. Sam, you know, Sam went down after that game in Washington, but he did a nice job for us all season and gives us some length and, and another left-handed option out of the pen. But um, but I think our roster will continue to, to be fluid over the course of the month and make sure we get a look at, at some guys. I, I, I know a lot of people like to ask about Brad Harris and Daryl Hernays, uh, shortstop and third baseman down in Vegas. I mean, Hernays has been ripping it up. Could we potentially see those two? They're in the conversation for sure. I think uh, the two of them along with – with Max Schumann, uh, who's had a nice year. Those are, you know, those are some of the guys we've talked about. Kyle McCann has done a great job behind the plate there. So all those guys have come up at some point over the course of the season, um, and certainly on the the pitching side as well. You know, Chad Smith is back healthy pitching down there. Uh, it'd be nice to get him an opportunity up here again. And then you've got the two guys who were just promoted, Joey Estes and Joe Boyle, who. Um, have done done nicely in their first couple AAA opportunities, and and you never know uh, if there's a spot for them up here. Yeah, a lot of noise about those two guys. Obviously, Estes came over in, from the Atlanta Braves, and then Boyle, who you recently got, the big kid out of Notre Dame. Everybody's loving these two names and what's going on. Well, Boyle Boyle's arm is hard not to like. I mean, it's 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 a fastball up to a hundred. It's two different breaking balls. Uh, and he's done a great job. And, and Joey is is kind of the ultimate competitor. You know, we saw it a little bit at Lansing this year, but he really took a step forward in Midland this year. And um, and he's he's kept it going in AAA. So um, his development this year has been outstanding. You know, when you look at guys on the big club right now, I have to ask you about Shea Langoliers. There just looks like something different. I mean, sure, not sure. only is he hitting the home runs, but he's just – he's hitting the ball harder. I know he's had a lot of – different pitchers he's had to deal with this year but let's just talk about the confidence you're seeing from him at the plate had a, he had a great road trip I mean it started when we were still at home last week and I think he spent spent some time in the cage I know he's working with a bunch of different guys in the clubhouse and trying you know trying to get his swing down 
Um, and obviously, when, as soon as you see results on the field, it, it's really rewarding to the player for the extra work put in. But but you're right. Shea's had a lot thrown at him his first full season. Uh, I, I've lost track. 20-something different pitchers he's had to work with, maybe, maybe in the 30s by now. I don't know. But um, but he's got a lot on defense to deal with, and, and it is has been really nice to see you know, not only power, but just getting his hits, hitting the ball the other way and, and doing the things we knew he was capable of. I mean, think about that. There's not many guys that played catcher for the Oakland Athletics and hit 20 home runs in a season. I think he's going to get there. That That's a pretty big accomplishment. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Again, in his first full season and, and, you know, coming in this year, a lot of pressure to fill some big shoes that Sean Murphy left behind. And, you know, as we've talked about, it's not – not entirely fair to expect young players to to have this sort of linear progression. They're going to go up and down, and uh, and but it's been nice to see Shea the last couple of weeks. Everybody, we all know how excited it was. Everybody was for Lawrence Butler. Can't wait for him to come up. Now that we've gotten to see him, enjoy him. He's a hell of a kid. What are your thoughts so far seeing him at the big league level? Well, a couple things. I mean, we you see the power. I mean, the two balls he's hit out have been absolute no doubters, and you know, you know that's in there. Um, he's not getting overmatched at the plate. Um, you know, he's got his share of strikeouts. I know he took a walk finally the other day, um, but he's having good at bats, and he's handled center field really well. I think that's that's as impressive as anything to come up here. You know, he played all three positions in the minor leagues, but frankly, was primarily a corner guy in Midland because Denzel Clark was playing a lot of center field. Um, and to handle center field as well as he has has been really great. You know, you mentioned walks, and we all love walks, but you can see how a young player comes up. He's very anx anxious. It's tough to have guys be patient when they first come up. No doubt. No doubt. That's the hardest thing. Guys want to prove that they belong here. They want to, you know, make some fireworks happen right away. And that they're – they're anxious to swing and get their hits, but um, but Lawrence is settling into having some really good bats. You know, when you, when we talk about guys finishing the season, finishing strong, and even if you're not playing well, still just understanding what that grind is. So when you go into the off season, you know how to now prepare yourself physically and just as as important as important mentally, getting ready for the 2024 season just talk about what, what you talk about with the manager what you talk about with the players about why finishing the season the right way is so important it is and we we don't have many guys on this team that have played all the way to october 1st so this is going to be it's going to be an important month for them obviously you know not playing for a playoff spot um trying to get as many wins as possible though but but really finishing strong finishing healthy um, from the pitching standpoint, you've seen the wear on these guys and the starters who've posted just about every time out and, and the toll that it takes. So it's important, you know, for hopefully, you know, seasons soon to come where we're playing meaningful baseball in September. It's important that these guys experience that. We were all kind of shocked. And if you go look like not too long ago, no one was talking about waivers anymore no one was saying like hey there's gonna be teams dumping guys trying to get under luxury tax it was kind of shocking and it kind of surprised a lot of people what was your thought process when just take the angels alone how many guys that they end up losing they have seven new guys showing up to the ballpark today yeah we we joked yesterday that this was going to be an entirely new roster we're uh, we're facing for the angels but you know i was little surprised that they did that just because, you know, they kind of went all in at the deadline and, and made some moves, traded some prospects. It didn't work out. And, and I guess you can't blame them for, for pivoting and changing directions a little bit. But it's an int you know interesting part of today's game when you, you can't make those trades, you know, for a team that's looking, you know, maybe to cut bait a little bit. That was kind of their only option. Yeah, is this something that we're now going to be looking right before September? You think here in the upcoming future, like, hey, who's gonna who's gonna start putting people out there on waivers? We thought you couldn't get any more players. Well, here now you have a possibility to get guys to help you for the stretch run, even in the postseason and and maybe the World Series. Yeah, I mean, it it, it happens on a smaller scale. We you know we we obviously moved Ramon on waivers after July thirty first to the the Guardians. Um, I, I'm not sure this is going to become the norm. Um, you had a team in a unique situation there in Anaheim, but 
um, but it is it is always a possibility. For, for your young players, how important has it been to play in front of some really good crowds? I mean, we can talk about San Francisco, talk about down at Dodger Stadium, Coors Field at big numbers, uh, just what they got to see in Seattle where everybody's so fired up about the Mariners and they're so hot. What does that do for the young players to get that kind of experience? I'll tell you, it was, it was the first thing that Cots mentioned to me after the game Tuesday night in Seattle, that we won three to one, um, huge crowd. And when I talked to him after the game, the first thing he said was, man, it was so good for our guys to, to be in that environment and, and learn how to come out successful. Uh, you know, obviously we didn't score after the second inning, but our pitchers did a great job holding on. Bullpen did a nice job. Trevor closed it out. Um, but for, for them to just be there, experience that, um, and all those other places that you've mentioned, they've gone through it. It is, it, it's a whole part of development. You don't think about development at the big league level that much, but that's what we're doing. I, I have to do it in the post game show where I have to separate wins and losses compared to what's good for the future of the team. And that's just me. What's it like for you where you're about wins and losses, but yet, mm -hmm. you know, you got to keep your eye on the prize and that's the future. Yeah. That's been the balancing act all year is, is taking, taking the development wins quote, cause they're, they're not the same as, as actual wins. Um, but taking some of those, those wins away and the positives away, um, but still hoping we get our share of W's. We know Ruiz is a special talent. We've seen him now moved around. We've seen him in left. We've seen him in right. You know, now that you've seen him throughout almost an entire season, where are you with him in his development? Well, there are certainly things that he does really well. Um, and we've seen him impact the game on the base paths. We saw earlier in the season, you know, his ability to hit with runners in scoring position. Um, and now he's actually, you know, he's playing well in the corner. He's made a great catch in right field in Chicago a few days ago. Um, he can, you know, run down the ball in left field with Lawrence playing center. So, you know, I think the adjustment is going to have to come at the plate. Obviously, um, you know, we haven't seen him get on base the way you would typically see a leadoff hitter or a guy at the top of the lineup and um, or drive the ball the way we think he's capable of doing. So there are some adjustments to make at the plate, but there's there's no doubt there are different ways he can impact the game. I'm not going to ask you about any of your pickleball injuries, but uh, Freddie Tarnock, he had hip surgery, and we're hearing that he'll be good to go for spring training. That's that's the plan. Yeah, tough, uh, kind of a tough year for Freddie. Starting, you know, starting with the issues in in spring training related to thoracic outlet, he was able to sort of battle through that and came back and had a few good outings and kind of showed yeah. us what what he's capable of, but. Um, you know, went on the IL with the, the calf issue that turned out was kind of you know, related to, to the hip. And once we went in there and did the MRI, he clearly needed to have a procedure done. So, yeah, Freddie's shelved for the rest of the year, but hope is he's good for spring training. And we've we've seen a little bit of what he's capable of doing. Does, does somebody like Freddie and knowing that you have a lot of different young guys that are going to be available for spring training, it's like Freddie excites me. I, I his arm, no question. Do you have that kind of? I know we got a long way to go till then, but yeah. that like, you're going to have a lot of guys battling for spots. We are, we are. I, I need a couple of days of off season first, but then I'll be excited about spring training. Um, and yeah, well, you know, again, the more information we've gathered on guys, the more we've seen what they're capable of, the more it excites you about where they're headed, where the organization is headed, and how we sort of fill out this puzzle going forward. Well, we're going to be calling you the day after the season because we're, we're going to start our spring training roster. We just want to let you know. Uh, we'll yeah, be calling yeah. you. Uh, Johnny Gomes is one of my favorite guys that I've ever covered with the A's. I'll never forget that we get back from Japan, and he was my first interview for the pregame show uh, on American soil for 2012. Yeah. And he says to me, he goes, we're going to win this division. And I'm doing the interview going, oh, really? Are you sure about that? And I just think about what a great leader Johnny Gomes was. What do you remember about Johnny Gomes as an Oakland athlete? I remember his robe, first and foremost. He wore that he wore that yellow robe in the uh, clubhouse with his number on the back and ended up getting him for a bunch of guys. But but I you know, I remember his presence in the clubhouse and his ability to affect the energy and the enthusiasm in there. And and like you said, he he was a leader on and off the field. 
um, you know, even the later years of his career, he, he impacted clubs that way because because he brought experience and and some presence. And he was he was a, always a fun guy to have around. No doubt about it. Hey, great stuff. And we'll talk to you soon. You be well. And, and hopefully we'll see these minor leagues, team, these minor league teams, especially our guy Fran Reardon in Vegas, bring it home. No doubt. No doubt. Thanks, Tony.